Welcome to another worship experience with the Methodist Voices in Word and Song television ministry. We are so happy you could join us. Today our preacher is the Reverend Bosworth Mullins, Superintendent Minister from the Cook Circuit. Please have your Bibles your hymn books, and be ready to share with us. May your time with us be a blessing. On this fifth Lord's Day of Lent, we gather to worship God who sent his Son to be our Savior. As he journeyed to the cross, his life has become our example to follow. We continue to sing his praises, and the pledge to become his disciples. The choir will lead us in the intro. Lord, I lift your name on high. Call to worship. The Lord is making a new covenant with the people of God. Here in this place, Christ writes the law of love on our hearts. We are children of the living God. Together, let us worship the Lord of love. The hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus the Redeemer. Number 55 in the VIP. Will God is 
Let us bow our heads in our prayer of adoration. Lord God Almighty, King of glory and love eternal, you are worthy all times to receive glory, honor, and praise. Nothing exceeds your power. Nothing is too great for you to do. Nothing too glad for you to give. Infinite is your might. Boundless your love. Limitless your grace. Glorious your saving name. We praise you for the privilege of knowing you and being transformed into your likeness. Without you, we would be lost. So, Lord God, we have no choice but to worship you and acknowledge that you alone are to be worshipped. All glory, honor, dominion, and power belongs to you now and forever. Amen. Let us, in the silence of our hearts, confess our sins. O Lord, try as we might, we cannot comprehend. We know Easter is coming soon. While we anxiously wait to celebrate your triumph victory over sin and death, there are still difficult days between now and then. There is nothing perfect about us, yet you beckon us with hands that soon will be scarred by betrayal, greed, selfishness, pettiness, greed, and apathy. You see us and our imperfections with compassionate and patient eyes as we struggle to rid our lives of all the worldly things that distort, destruct, and entrange us, entangle us. As the cross looms ahead, our eyes, our focus are on you, and you alone for our redemption and salvation. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The hymn... Oh, the bitter shame and sorrow. Number 91 in the VIP.
let us continue in prayer. Forgive us, O Lord, o Lord for, for our wickedness, wickedness and help us to become more and more like you through Jesus Christ, Christ our, Lord. our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of assurance. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting our trespasses against him and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Hear then Christ's words of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We will now have the children and youth focus by Brother Victor Maxuini. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Uncle Vic. And I'm Susie. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I notice you're happy today, Susie. Yes, I am. Why? Well, because I, I found my shoes. Oh, you've been looking for your shoes for a while, eh? And you found it? Yes, and that's why I'm so happy. Good, good. And uh, how did you find your shoes? Well, did you help me? Yes, I remember. I told you to look in the closet, and you looked there, and you found your shoes. And so you are what? I am very happy. Ah, oh, you are very happy. You know what in the lesson today? In John chapter 12, some men, they were called Greeks. They're from another country. And they were looking for Jesus. And they were looking for Jesus. And they went to Jesus' friend. And they asked him to help them to find Jesus. What did they do? Well, they, it was Philip and Andrew, and they, they helped them to find Jesus. Wow! You know, Jesus was very popular, you know. Why? Well, Jesus was healing people. Jesus raised people from the dead. And, um, and this was the talk of the tongue. And they were having a big party, big celebration. Why? Well, they remembered people, God's children, they remembered that God, how God delivered them from slavery. People were mean to them, and they cried out to God, and God delivered them. And so every year, they have a big celebration. Wow! And so in the big celebration, people would come from all over the world. And so these people, these men, they wanted to find Jesus. And you know about these men? They, they were skeptical of Jesus. They didn't believe that God could be a human, and God could be a man. So they wanted to talk to him to find out who he was. Wow! But you know the same thing with us today? People are looking for Jesus. How? Huh? Is Jesus here? No, he's not here in person. But you, people are still looking for Jesus. You know how they can find Jesus? I don't know. Well, let me tell you. They can find Jesus in God's word. You look in the Bible, yes, and you can learn and you can find all you need to know about Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says in John 3:16 that God loves the world so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross. You know what? What? Well, we are celebrating the Lenten season. That's the time when Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. And Jesus did not eat. And he was praying. And after the 40 days, Jesus went on the cross and he died. Because he loves you and he loves me. So you see, when we, when we search for Jesus, we look into God's word. And God's word tells us all about Jesus, how we can find Jesus, and most importantly, what? we can have Jesus in our hearts. We can invite him in our hearts. How can I do that? Well, you can do that by reading his words, by obeying his words, and by listening to the good voice that you have inside of you that tells you to do things that pleases God. Don't you want to do that? Yeah. And when you do that, you find Jesus. All right? Do you want to find Jesus? Yes. Well, let us pray about it. All right, let us pray. Do you want to pray? All right. Okay, you pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you that I can find Jesus in your word and that Jesus loves me and that he wants to be in my heart. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, that was a beautiful prayer. Thank you very much. I am sure that the children, all of you, receive a blessing from the Youth Focus. We will now be blessed with a testimony. 
by Sister Denise Mullings. As many of you may know, I have had cancer. Well, I'm going to let you know something that happened after I had the first cancer. I was told that I was not to have any more children. So we did everything in our power not to get pregnant, except abstain. Eventually, we found out that I was pregnant, and all the doctors said that I had to terminate. My cancer doctor, who is a Christian, said, Denise, you know as your doctor, I must tell you that you have to terminate. But as your friend and a Christian, you know what God can do. My gynecologist said, Denise, I don't do terminations, but I'll do yours because your life is at stake. Everywhere I turned, I heard that my life was at stake. So a friend of mine said, we're going to have a prayer meeting. I will tell you, I have never been to so many prayer meetings in all my life. But this one was special, where a lot of folks were gathered, and they sought the Lord as to what would happen. One lady who was there brought a little memory gem card, as I call it, that said on it, lovest thou me? To me, lovest thou me meant, do you love me enough to die for me? So I was kind of panicking now, no, Lord, no, no, I'm not ready. No, Lord, you know I want to live. All this going on in my mind while everybody around me was talking about death and dying. And I'm there saying, Lord, this is not what I came to hear. Lord, no, Lord, and I'm fighting this in my mind. Nobody knew what was going on until they even asked Bosworth what would he want. And he said, well, I know my wife, I don't know the child, so if I had to choose, I'd have to choose my wife. The next thing you know, one of the ladies, I just felt a peace coming over me when I said, you know, Lord, I can't fight you, so yes, if that's what you want, I'm ready. When I said that within myself, I felt this calm, and I said, Yes, Lord, I'm ready. And one of the ladies in the prayer group got up and said, and the Lord says to tell you, because you have been faithful enough to come and ask what you should do with this child, I'm going to give you a healthy, normal child. At that, I just broke down. You know, Lord, you're talking to me, a sinner like me? Gosh, Lord, and I was just broken. At that point, Bosworth was still listening because he said he didn't want just a healthy, normal child and no wife to look after it. So he said he heard, and both mother and child will have long life. After that, we both broke down and cried, and we don't know what else was said after that. Well, I had a beautiful pregnancy. Everything went well and went into hospital. Uh, when my water broke, which I'd never have happened before. Normally, I had to be induced with the first three. And believe me, all of a sudden, I realized that the nurses were going back and forth, checking me every minute. And I said, what's going on here? They said, well, the baby has turned breech. That means the feet were coming first. And the cord is wrapped around his neck. In their thought, a dead child. So they called the doctor who came, believe me, I don't know how she got there so fast, here in rollers, scarf on her head, and they said they have to do an emergency Caesar. So they had Bosworth lifting up the bed first to try and keep the child back down. And I don't know how they expected me to do that, but that's what they had him doing, lifting up the foot of the bed and to push the baby back in. Anyway, as the doctor came, they said, rush her to theater now. So they rushed me down to the theater with Bosworth running behind them saying, remember to tie off her tubes, remember to tie off her tubes. So that, that when I reached down to the operating theater, I said to him, Bosworth, you realize that everything has gone dead wrong? He said, yes, but remember God's promise. I said, pray with me. This he did, and they whisked me into the theater. Well, before I knew it, I felt this knife in my stomach, rip, 
And I'm saying, oh my God, I realize that I'm not asleep and they don't know that I'm not asleep. So I try to open my eyes, kick my legs, move my hands, do everything to tell them I'm not yet asleep, but nothing would move. I, my body was dead, but my mind was wide awake. So I thought to myself, the last thought I had, now I know how someone who has been pronounced dead feels when they are not dead and can't tell you. Well, everything went fine, and I woke up to hear that I had a bouncing baby boy who didn't even have to go into the incubator. He was healthy and strong, and we gave God all the praise and glory. I want to tell you that our God is a promise-keeping God. Today, that child will be 34 years old next month, and I will be 71. So we are giving God plenty praise. I can only say, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all the world has to offer, but give me Jesus. The ministry of the word. Let us pray together the colic. Gracious Father, you gave up your son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of your Savior's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and begins with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson, Jeremiah 31, 31 through to 34, which will be read by Sister Denise Mullings. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law within them, and I'll write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading is Psalm 51, 1 through to 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter 
than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle comes to us from Hebrews 5, reading from verse 5 through to 10, which will be read by Brother Victor Maxwini. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now join in the song, Open Our Eyes, Lord. I invite you now to stand for the reading of the gospel. And this will be read by the Reverend Bosworth Mullings. The gospel reading comes to us from John chapter 12, verses 20 through to 33. Glory to you, O God. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, in Galilee and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered, 
The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from this earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. And the Lord now prepare our hearts to hear the message that will be preached to us. The text for the sermon is John chapter 12, verses 20 and 21. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Our topic is searching for Jesus. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today, I start with a story that I heard from my cousin a few years ago. A certain preacher was baptizing new converts in the sea. He was really enjoying himself when suddenly he realized that there were no more candidates for baptism. Looking up, he saw a man passing by who was staggering as if he was under the influence of something. In his exuberance, he went and grabbed the man, hauled him into the water, and told him that he needed Jesus and that he was going to baptize him today. Before the man could protest, the pastor ducked the man under the water and after bringing him up, asked him, have you seen Jesus? The man spluttering said no, and before he could say another word, the pastor ducked him again and brought him up, repeating the same question with a little more emphasis. Have you seen Jesus? By this time, the man became quite befuddled but still managed to spurt out an emphatic, no, sir. Before he said another word again, the pastor ducked him a third time, repeating the question with much more emphasis. Have you seen Jesus? The poor man by this time was now totally bewildered, disoriented, and possibly angry. He shouted back, You sure say yes or him last, sir? For those who do not know or understand Jamaican, the translation is, are you sure that this is where he was lost, sir? On hearing this story, we can conclude at least two things. 
Firstly, this story cannot possibly be true. In other words, it is just an illustration. Secondly, Jesus cannot be lost. It is we who are lost, not Jesus. Today's gospel reading tells us that some Greeks came searching for Jesus and told Philip, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. But what did they mean? What was their motive? We know that they came to the Passover festival to worship. But why did they want to see Jesus? I am not sure. The text does not tell us. What we do know is that many different persons followed Jesus with varying motives. Some were genuine and some were evil, while others were misguided or just plain inquisitive. However, Jesus knew what was in all their hearts. Examples of these are Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night, John chapter 3. And in John 6, verse 26, Jesus says this about the crowd. Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Furthermore, the Gospel of Mark, <clears throat> chapter 3, and verse 2 tells us that the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. Their motive was ulterior. Today, we are far advanced into the observance of the season of Lent. Only two more Sundays and we will be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent has become an established tradition in the liturgical church year, and for various reasons, not all Christian communions observe it. But for those who do, the season of Lent can be an important time in helping us to be true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. The season of Lent is not the goal the goal of Lent is to achieve a lifelong intimacy with God. The observance of Lent is becoming while the goal of Lent is being. This is why it is important to have the right understanding of Lent and therefore to have the right motive for its observance. Today's message searching for Jesus, is designed to examine our motives so that we will focus more on being rather than on becoming. Focus more on the goal rather than on the process. The goal of Lent is being. It is an opportunity to reaffirm our lifelong quest to know Jesus, not a one-time encounter. Searching for Jesus is a quest to consistently live the transformed life. It is a yearning for intimacy with Christ that lasts for eternity. It is characterized by a commitment to lifelong self-denial. So giving up something for Lent cannot be a reflection of the right motive or the true meaning of Lent. The emphasis can't be on the things that we give up, though we must give up some things. The emphasis must be on the things we do that enables us to practice living in the presence of God. This involves repentance and self-denial and is informed by much prayer, Bible study, and fasting. 
the correct observance of Lent helps us to deny self and embrace Christ. Not just for the period of Lent, but it continues into eternity. So that God who judges the heart, which is our motive, where our motives are, can say at the end of our earthly lives, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The Holy Scriptures have God telling us in Jeremiah 29, verses 12 and 13. Then, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. We are to diligently search for Jesus. Not because Jesus is lost. Jesus is never lost. But the God of this world has blinded us to the truth about God and about ourselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Confession and repentance, therefore, help us to name the sin in our lives that enslaves us and, and blinds us to the truth. They lead us to self-denial, which allows the light of Christ to change us. In this process, we move from becoming to being. We move from floundering to flourishing. This search for Jesus makes the new life in Christ a, reali a reality. We are a new creation where we embraced everything that is Christ. The quest is to know Christ and make him known through authentic discipleship and Christian living. This new life, this transformed life, represents our new being and is the evidence or proof of Jesus' power to save. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Philippians chapter 3 and verses 10 and 11. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. It if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. In closing then, let us not forget that searching for Jesus must be a quest that occupies every moment of our lives, not just for the Lenten season, but for the rest of our earthly lives into all eternity. I urge us all, if we have not already started, that we must now start and embark on the quest to search for Jesus for the rest of our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, as we contemplate what the Lord has been saying to us, let us listen to the song, Give Me Jesus, written by Fernando Ortega, and sung by our own Methodist brother, John Finley. I pray that it will bless you and inspire you as it did me. And 
when I am alone, oh, when I am alone, and when I am alone, give me Jesus, give me Announcements. Port Antonia Circuit have on sale a Lenten study booklet which focuses on the symbols associated with the crucifixion of Christ. It is designed to be used as a weekly study during the Lenten season. The cost is only, I repeat, only 500 Jamaican dollars per copy. Every home should have one. Copies can be had from Mrs. Margaret Clark Anderson. Telephone number 876-830-2060 or from the Saxstaff Methodist Church Office 876-924-1400 Make sure you get your copy. Of all, we want to thank our worshipers for making your financial support to the ministries of the local churches. As a church community, we are involved in sharing care packages to the homebound members and the community residents and the other programs of the church. Do continue your good work. Please contact your class leaders and local church office for opening hours and banking information to make your weekly tithes and offerings. We invite your support for this ministry on television. To make your contributions, please call, and I want you to take note of these numbers. 876 925 6768 
or 876-924-1218 or make deposits as displayed on your screen. Let us now give God thanks. I am sure that many of you are at home and therefore your offering is very important. This is a part of the worship. So we ask you to make sure that you send your offerings to your church office. Now that we have received the offering, there will be a blessing on what we receive and what you have set aside to be sent to your respective church offices. Let us pray. Gracious God, God of abundance, we give you thanks this morning for the gifts that your children have brought into your worship. And so, Lord God, we thank you. And we pray that you will bless the givers. And as you bless the givers, you will lead our hearts in the right direction so that these gifts may be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we go into our in intercessory prayer. May there be a time of quietness, please. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, make your ways known upon the earth and your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away, nor the sick healed. Make us instruments of your peace and let us experience the joy of your presence. Let your glory be over all the earth. O oh Lord God, you hold both heaven and earth in your hands. Let your great love shine in the waste of our anger and sorrow and give peace to your church. Peace among nations, peace in our communities, in our homes, and in our hearts, so that the world will be filled with the power of your reconciling love. All these and other mercies we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. We will now sing the Lord's Prayer which will be done in the traditional way.
Let us now all join in the singing of the closing hymn. I am the way, the king of the victory. Number 46 in the VIP. I now invite Reverend Bosworth Mullins to pronounce the benediction. God is writing a new covenant on our hearts. God will be our God and we will be God's people. No longer shall we teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord. For we shall all know God. In the name of God, the source of life, the word of truth, and the spirit of love. Amen. <laughs>